Hey there, Super Llama here. Um, I figured today I would give uh, everybody a tour of my new lock room. Um, now that I've moved, everything has been mostly set up, and uh, I figured uh, now would be the time to do it. So, there we go. And don't worry, everything won't be uh, recorded in my hand. I'll get my uh, larger tripod to uh, to uh, get steady shots of everything. So, everything is uh, basically set up here. Um, the room is basically divided into two parts. Lock picking and lock building. Um, we've got a bench mill, uh, lathe, uh, we'll get into everything in more detail, and my picking table, picks. Uh, extra locks, vice, gutting, etc. So, here is the uh, newest toy I have. My uh, Craftex, um, I guess I could say it's a bench top mill, really. Um, does a pretty good job. Have we met any further? No, not really. I've got it uh, locked right now. Real nice. I believe it's a uh, half horse, ha half horsepower uh, motor, um, gear head style. Um, just one of those um, um, X2 clones. Um, it has a Sabo um, vise, which uh, handle comes off. Both jaws do move; they close in. I need to get a uh, a lamp for this setup, just like I have for all the rest of my setups. That way I can record with lots of light. So, uh, over here we have my Unimat lathe, which uh, many are familiar with. Actually, I'll get a light going on for that. Much better. Unimat lathe does a great job doing everything I need. But for the most part, I just do uh, brass. Um, this is uh, an extension. It would normally attach onto the base here for the headstock and it would allow the headstock to move up so that way it could become a mill. But it's not the most sturdy mill and uh, switching it back and forth between each was uh, a real hassle. So um, that's why I went out and bought the Craftex mill in the first place. Um, Find the garbage there. I have set up here um, locks, lock bodies to use. Uh, that's an M heart there. Um, keys for the M heart. Both um, angled cut, and I think I've got a non angled cut in there somewhere as well. Um, other parts to make things. This uh, I was going to tear down and make uh, a Protect pick with. I'm still kind of working on it. Don't exactly have. A full system made out for it yet. It's still kind of in the process of making things. Um, lathe tools uh, and other things such as uh, four jaw chuck. I've got the keys in there somewhere. I've got um, carbide bits. Very, very small. It's upside down. There. Carbide bits. I do all right for what I need to do. Where did that go? There. Uh, steady rest um, nails. I use these uh, finishing nails to make the um, center pieces for my wafer pins. Um, tons of other stuff for the the uh, lathe here. Live center, dev, dead center. Um, Lots of stuff. Green box. Uh, waste. Waste locks. So keys. Um, deadlock bodies such as the failed uh, half of the um, Everest. This one uh, I was attempting to put uh, Acid Twin 6000 pins in, but the pins interfered with the top stack, and if you used a key, it didn't work. Uh, lots of measuring tools here. Lots and lots of measuring tools. Um, 
I have an electronic caliper, one that was an electronic caliper but is now not because I lost the cover. Um, you know, um, this ruler guy here, kind of like a caliper, no electronic bits to him. Um, thanks for measuring the inner diameter of things. That obviously will not measure the inner diameter of a lock. Way too big for that pocket ruler. Um, when I move locks around or I've been working on them but won't be working on them in a little bit or for an extended period of time, sorry, they will go into their own bag with a pinning tray and all the parts that are uh, part of that lock. Uh, moving on to the picking table, to the left of it here I have assorted um, containers to put locks in or uh, pins or what have you, um, numerous different sizes. One of my neighbors, he's a millwright, so he gets tons of these and he hands me all the small ones. It's great. Uh, picking table, two different tripods. I mainly use this one. Um, this is a Chinese knockoff of, I don't remember what it is, but they also have this, this design where all the legs can move around and can grip on posts and things like that. This one's great. It gives me just the right height I need to get a good vantage point on my vise. That's just a Medico uh, interchangeable core. Don't have the key. I've been trying to get that thing out for a couple of months now. Um, just a bunch of locks, uh, combo dial with a stand, um, starting to get into safe cracking. Um, bin of locks to pick, both challenge locks and stock locks. Um, nearly empty bin of locks that can be sent away, challenge locks mostly. Um, that is just a package of a key uh, for my Acid Twin 6000 challenge lock I built uh, months ago. Um, it's got a nasty habit of locking people out uh, due to the secondary sidebar groove. So that is just, um, it's an Acid Twin 6000 key, but with the top stack cut off. So that way if it is locked, you can just insert the key, clock it back, and it should unlock itself. Um, cans of root beer, I like my root beer. Dead spring. Um, these are a box of M hearts. Um, I've got one that I have already self tapped and I'm trying to pick, and I've got some stocked up in case I have a trade that I need to do or something like that. Um, locks to trade. That was in a box that I got from West Coast Picks after I beat his. Uh, Sub Zero Challenge. Um, M Heart. Um, this actually shouldn't be traded. This belongs to one of the Discord users, uh, Mr. Chisel. Haven't seen him in a while, so it's just sitting in there because I didn't know what else to do with it. Um, okay, give me a minute to set up my other tripod and we'll get into the shelving of everything. Okay, this is the table under the mill. There's the mill there. Uh, main shelf, I bought this table because it was cheap and steady. Don't worry about all the grinding. All these tools here are for the mill itself. If I need to take uh, a part of it off or if I need to adjust something, I have all the wrenches, all the, um, all the Allen keys, um, screwdriver, chuck key, everything I need. Um, oil bottle, I need to put oil in it. Uh, a couple of collets. All right, haven't even used them. Um, a brush that is for uh, cleaning off the mill, um, just to get rid of all the chips and things like that. Um, and a couple of adjustable wrenches here, um, in case I don't have the size I need right away. Um, this wrench, uh, all these things, most of them really came with uh, the mill itself. And this one is for the uh, rear nut on the back because the neck itself, I'll just scroll up a little bit here so you guys can see. The neck itself can actually pivot uh, to the left and to the right uh, quite a number of degrees. 
um, which is nice, um, but uh, in the long run, it, it means that the headstock itself and everything else um, from the, the neck up um, can be a little bit flimsier, seeing as it's attached by one nut at the back. Um, so I don't adjust that at all. Um, I've left it at zero and I probably will never adjust it. I just don't see a need for it at all. Back down. And over on these drawers here. Oh, neat. Notice that. I have an extra little table there. Uh, raw materials. Uh, spring steel. Um, brass. Uh, plate, I guess you could say. Um, brass rod, aluminum rod. Brass rod. Uh, aluminum rod. This is completely hollow, if you can see that. Um, this is the perfect size for American pins. I don't recall exactly what size it is, but one of my local hobby shops sells uh, that rod in both aluminum and brass with holes pre-drilled through the entire thing. Um, so that way I can just cut off sections and um, put them onto a small nail, peg them together, and um, then I've got some wafer pins for Americans and Masters. Uh, second shelf, or right. second drawer. Tools, um, empty casing for one of the, um, one of the calipers. Uh, hacksaw blades, never used them, bought them like three years ago. Never used them. C-clips in case I lose um, a clip on the back of a lock or if I need it for the mill or the lathe or whatever. Um, uh, files. Don't use them as much anymore now that I have my, my mill and my lathe. But uh, sometimes they do come in handy to shave back um, picks or what have you. Um, rubber O-rings. These the big ones are actually very well used for the lathe, the belts on the lathe. Um, you can still get belts for the Unimat 200 uh, dB, um, but you have to buy them from America. Um, I think it's about $10 each belt. It's a, it's a uniform size, both for the drive to the idler gear and the idler gear to the, uh, the main pulley that runs the actual uh, headstock, um, but that box of O-rings was probably about ten dollars. Um, so to me, it's much more worth it to go through those, um, maybe two thirds as fast as an actual belt, um, as it is to buy one belt online and hope it lasts just as long. Especially considering I'm Canadian and the American to Canadian conversion is not very nice. Uh, final drawer. Uh, we've got some other nails um, used for uh, dish detainer pick making, um, which I'm starting to get into now that I'm uh, working on the Protec. Um, a couple of end mills. This is a four flute. It's a little dull, but it still works. The other is a two flute, so nothing really too bad with it. Uh, what else do we have out here? Um, these bags here, different sized uh, micro drill bits. Um, this one is number, oh no, hold on. This is actually example pins um, that I keep after making oversized uh, versions of so I can take measurements uh, and things like that. These are micro-sized drill bits, number 58, uh, 59, and 60. Um, I've got other sized pins, or sorry, other sized bits in this Altoid container. Um, dental uh, bits, which I use for very, very small milling. Um, thread taps, different drill bits of different sizes going from four millimeters all the way down to, I don't even know. Again, we go down to like number 60 drill bit, so. Um, number of different things. Um, and 
ball end point for a Dremel. Actually works really well for uh, an end mill as well. Lots of different taps here. Um, I also have somewhere in here um, a hole starter. Not sure exactly where it went. Anyway, lots and lots of different drill bits in there. On this side, um, lots of pins. Lots and lots of pins. Um, assorted, bought them on eBay. Um, I don't worry too much about the drivers, but as most of you know, I don't make security key pins. So um, when I change up the biddings, eventually I do run low on pins. So uh, that's about a pound and a half of pins. Maybe it's a little less now because I've had it for a while. So I just change up the key pins to whatever I need and things work. Um, these square boxes. Um, let me just open them actually. This one is going to be springs for a wafer lock. And many assorted wafers. I was given a bunch of uh, wafer locks from a friend who repairs um, um, arcade machines and, and things like that, so I just gutted whatever was good and, and took those parts. Um, these containers, um, these two are going to be driver springs, uh, you know, top springs, things like that. Uh, sidebar springs, assorted, medical primus, um, fingerprint, fingerprint springs, uh, that's going to be primus. And check pins, that one's currently pretty well empty because I had to go through the all, almost all the check pins. There's only one left in there um, to make my Everest challenge lock. Um, I bought 10 or 15 and the first five or six uh, were failed attempts. Um, and the remainder either got lost or ended up in the lock and out to the world. So that is this desk here on the on the mill. Let me see here. The only thing really left is um, let's get more detail on my picking station. Um, I do have a spooks bag. That's the large. Um, so I have a huge variety of extra picks. Just about all of these are for single pin picking. Um, also mostly top of the uh, keyway tension. I do have uh, a few bottom of the keyway tension, but it's very rare that I need bottom of the keyway. Um, my rakes, right about here, that's all of them. Just those three or two pouches. Um, city rakes, some worm rakes, I don't think I've ever used any of those. Some ball rakes, I use those on wafers if I need to get into something like an auto lock. Um, I've got my Primus finger pin pick there. Uh, and for the drawers, let's see if I can angle this a little better. That might do it. Uh, lock gutting. So uh, followers, pinning shoe, trays, um, flathead, uh, Phillips, pliers. Um, the rest of the Euro gutting kit. Um, I keep the other things like the C-clip removal tool and the tweezers um, in here. I also have um, a dental pick, good for getting uh, springs uh, or things like that in um, kind of tight spots but still needs some rigidity. It'll get in there and dig it out. A lot of this stuff you've probably seen in some of my videos already. Um, I have uh, a precision driver bit kit just in case I, it's some unorthodox size that I need. Um, there's also tweezers and things in there. Moving on. Main shelf here. There was a cover here, but it ripped off. The wood was getting old. Uh, assorted things. Um, a knife to get into packages, um, one of the screws, some key tags for when I make a challenge lock. Um, I can tag it immediately 
and off it goes. Back it up just a little bit more. Move the chair. Um, some containers I keep in here for um, picks to be finished off. Uh, these will be turned into um, finger pin picks. Um, assorted keys. Uh, sort of protect keys. I bought these as a lot online, um, but they were the wrong keyway for my protect that I have, so I couldn't use them. Um, the instructions to Evers Challenge Lock, which will go with that whenever I find someone who who uh, willingly wants that lock. Um, my Primus cutaway kit. It's got uh, Everest Primus, Primus, and Everest with working keys and tag. That is for sale, by the way. If you're interested, let me know, but do keep in mind, it is expensive. And... Stolen away. Final drawer here. A whole lot of nothing, really. Um, I do work on GM clusters every now and then, so I've got uh, a stash of, of GM cluster motors. Um, mostly empty plastic bags, um, especially this one. Um, I send out pins every now and then, or if people want pins, springs, whatever. Um, if it's safe enough to put in this bag, I'll wrap it up in the bag, and then I'll also get one of the small containers and put it in the container. That way it's extra safe, it's not going anywhere. I know it won't do anything wrong. Um, even if the uh, packaging got uh, you know, thrown around quite a lot, um, it would be okay in the, in the long run. Um, not really a whole much more to show. Just gonna get things level here. Um, I do have a little bit of cleaning equipment over there just to keep the floor clean. I am working on uh, machines that spit brass chunks everywhere. So I keep that clean as much as I can. Um, the closet back there, that's filled with junk not related to lock picking. Um, uh, that box down in that corner right there, um, it's locks that I do have uh, up for trade or, or sale or whatever. Um, basic stuff, American 1100s and some slag bodies, things like that. Um, mostly things that I have no issue giving away if someone uh, needs them. Uh, I know I'll be taking 1100 out of there uh, probably within a month or so to give to a local picker um, because you can't find anything locally there in Toronto. So I commute back and forth now and then to Toronto. So I have no problem um, giving locks when people are looking for them, especially 1100s. Everyone should pick an 1100 at least once or twice. Um, so that is it. I think that's about it. So we will finish on this. Um, everyone, thanks for watching. If anybody has any questions about my lock room or wanted me to get into more detail about something that I may have forgotten or missed, let me know. Tell me pretty lies. Look me in the face. Tell me that you love me, even if it's fake.